So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leo Lapworth, and I'd like to talk to you about DBIX class, or DBIC as it's often referred to. I'm going to start off with a few kind of basic assumptions. Um, I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about Perl and Perl objects, and that you know a little bit about databases and creating a table with relationships between two tables. Um, if not, don't worry. Hopefully, this will still be of use to you. So what is DBX class? Well, it's an object relational mapper. You might say, well, what, what's that mean? It translates between SQL and objects. So instead of having to write reams and reams of SQL statements, you can deal with your database tables as if they are actually objects. So it's simple. It's powerful, it's complex, it's fabulous, and it's confusing all at the same time. Now, there are other ORMs out there. Uh, DBX class happens to be pretty much the best as far as most people are concerned, but of course, that's a, a personal opinion. And you might ask, well, why am I giving this talk? Hopefully, it'll help you avoid the mistakes that I made when I was first learning DBX class, help you learn it a bit faster, and also, overall, make your code easier, not only to read, but also to write in the first place. So of course, doing database stuff, we're going to need to set up some tables. And pretty much the standard example when you're talking about databases is to have a, a books table and an author's table. So our author's table, we're going to create the table. We're going to create a primary key, an ID in this instance. Uh, and each of our authors is going to have a name. So the example here I'm giving is using MySQL, but DBX class works with pretty much all of the databases. So some things I would point out when you're creating your tables right at the beginning. First off, always make your tables plural. It's a group of things. Or at least, if you're not going to make them plural, make them all singular. Be consistent on it, whatever you do. And also, start as you mean to go on. You might not be using UTF-8 now, but you definitely will at some point in the future, and it's always a pain to add it in later on, so start with UTF-8. So going back to our authors table, you can see I've followed my own rules. I've called it authors with the plural. We're going to use inodb in MySQL so we can have relationships. And I've got a foreign key of UTF-8. So that's our authors table. We need to create a very similar one for the guys uh, when we're doing our books table. So we're going to create our table books, give it an ID, a title, an author. And we're also going to have a foreign key called author, which references our author's table. So a few bits on creating a table like this. I always try and name the link field as a singular. And make sure that when you're setting up your tables, you've got the same type. So for in this instance, author is an int 8, which is what I used on my primary key on the author table. And we're then going to have the foreign key set up like this. So what are the standard things we do with databases? Well, CRUD is the standard way of looking at this, which is create, retrieve, update, and delete. It's most of the tasks you need to do with a database. Now, doing that manually, we used to have to write code that looked like this. So we're going to prepare an insert into our books table, saying which fields we're going to edit and put in placeholders. And then we're going to execute that. But I have to write this every single time and with variations of what I'm actually going to insert. And obviously, in this instance, I also already need to know the author ID. And if I want to do a retrieving of data, so here I'm going to select the title. And then because I'm going to follow that relationship, I need to specify that I want the author's name. So I need to know that's the field I want out of my author's table from the books and the authors, and then doing that join between using aware. So that's fine. I can prepare that. And then I can loop over each of my results. And so here I can see that I can actually print out the title and indeed the author name. And then when we want to do an update, I have got to do this preparing again. And I'm going to execute. And again, I've got to already know the ID of the book that I want to do the update on. 
and if I just want to do a delete, exactly the same sort of thing. But there's a lot of preparing and executing of code. It's, not, it's all about the database. It's not about the book. So where DBX class really kicks off is when you start doing things like this. So we're going to create something. We're going to create a book. We use the book model, and I'll show you how to create one of those later on. Calling create on it. We just specify the title, specify the author, and that's it. I haven't had to write any SQL. Now, one little tip at this point is when you're creating a record, don't pass in the primary key. Even if you're passing it in as undefined, your database will go off and add that key in for you, but the object you get back won't have it. So if you don't pass it in, what you get back is the correct primary key. So we've still had to know the ID of our author, and surely that's a bit of a pain. So what we can do is we can create, using an author model, we're going to create uh, Mr. Pratchett here. So I'm going to create an author, name of Terry Pratchett. And then what I can do is I can create using a relationship. So on Pratchett, I can say create related, and the relationship I'm going to use is the book's relationship, and I'm then going to specify the title of the book. Now, in fact, DBX class automatically creates methods for you. So in this instance, I've got add to books, which I can call on my author. And all I have to do there is pass in the title. And it's the books bit here which is automatically taken from the name of the relationship. So that method's always available to you. So that's having created something. How do we retrieve this back? Well, being Perl, there's lots of ways to do this. So on my book, if I already know the ID, I can use my book model and find an individual book, and I get that book object back. Or I could do a search for a specific title and say I only want a single record back. Or I could get a list of anything that matches that author ID, and I'm saying I want all of these back, and I get an array of those objects. We can also loop over, so we can create a result set, and we can go next and loop over those. So what you'll notice here, actually, is the very interesting bit is books to author. And what I've got back there is an author object. In this instance, I'm going to call name on it. But if there was another field of information I wanted to get out of it, that's fine. I just call that as an attribute method on the object. I don't have to keep going and changing my SQL statements to match the exact information that I want to get out. So you can do this here when you specify a search. You can pass in a configuration, which is basically a hash of various attributes. And you can do likes and betweens and greater thans and less thans. And all of that is based on the SQL abstract syntax. So if you want to know how to do anything for the search, just Perl doc SQL abstract. And once we have our object, we can update it. So again, you just call update, pass in the new parameters that you want uh, to change or add to, and your record is then updated. Deletes as simple as calling delete on your object. So I've shown you kind of the end bit. We need to actually start with how to create our schemas. So a schema defines your tables and information. So here we've got bookstore schema result authors. And we're basically telling it which table we've got, what the fields of those tables are, the types on those fields, um, what the primary key is down the bottom, and the has many is defining the relationship through to the books table. Of course, we then need to do the other side of this. So we need to do this for books as well. Of course, there's a bit more information here, uh, just defining every single field, and also the belongs to, because a book belongs to an author. Now. That really is just too much typing. We don't like typing. Too much maintenance. And that's where Schema Loader comes in. You can use Schema Loader to look at your database and produce that code for you. So all you need to do is create a very little script like this. So here we're going to use DBX class Schema Loader using the Mate Schema App method. On that, we're going to look up all our, set up our <coughs> database name, username, password make the schema, and we want to use namespaces because this splits out the directory structure for us, which I'll show you in a second. And we also tell it where we want to dump that out to. So we're going to dump it out into a lib directory. 
So namespaces splits out our logic cleanly. So we can have database schema result X, so books or authors, and that's an individual row as well as the information about how we set up the tables. We can then also have result set X, again, books or authors, and that's all to do with the searches and the results. So if we run our script, we get told it's dumping that out into the lib directory, and if I then find everything in the lib directory, we can see that those files have been automatically created for us. At this point, I actually go and create the result set directory as well, so that's ready for us later on. If we go and look at our bookstore schema, what you'll notice is you get, do not modify anything above this line. The reason being is if you change your database, you can just rerun the script and it will edit content above that line. But if you add anything to this, the, the content below it, you can, it won't touch that. So it makes customizing easy as well as maintaining. So this bit down here we can edit. And because I don't want to have to create my connection each time, I'm actually going to set up the connection details here so that that's always available. So how do we actually use all of this? Well, we use our bookstore schema and we ask what result set we want. So it's the authors, and that's how we create our author's model. So using the author model, I can create a new author called Douglas Adams. And on that author object that I get back, I can then use the add to books method to add a book relating to that author. So if we go into the database and we see, well, what has that actually done? So we can see it has created a new author for us, Douglas Adams, and there's some data in there for our books. So when you're creating these scripts, it's often useful to be able to debug and see exactly what SQL is being produced. So what you can do is use dbic trace, set that to one as an environment variable, and then run your script. And it will actually print out the SQL that has been generated and executed for you. So we can see how the author was added and then how the book was added. So that's fine. That lets us introduce talking directly to a database. But what happens if you want extra objects added onto the records that you get back? So let's have a look at result. So here we're going to add to our books. We want an ISBN method. So the key things on this are that it's the results books. I'm not going to touch any of the content above that warning. I'm going to add this new method called ISBN. And what comes in is the book object itself. So you'll see in the middle there, I'm actually calling title on it. So I can retrieve the title of the book. And then I can go off to Amazon or whatever I want to do and return the information. So once I've then got my book object, I can call ISBN on it. And that additional functionality will be applied, even though it's not directly relating to the database. It's using the information on that database. You can also add automatic inflating of information. So for example, here we've got books and the books had a date published. Now, I don't want to have to deal with date published as a string, as the MySQL date format. So what you can do is you can specify inflate and deflate actions. So inflate means that when we're getting the record out of the database, that's going to be passed into date time format MySQL, and therefore you'll get a date time object back. And the deflate, which assumes you have a date time object, we're just going to call YMD on it, which is the information that needs to get stored into the database. So using that, I can call book date published, and I can set a new value for it. So I can say, well, actually, it's published now. And I can then call update on that, and that information is saved back to the database. Or all the other way around, when we're deflating, I can call date published. What I get out of that is a date time object. So I can use all the date time methods, so in this instance, month abbrev, and I can print out that the month was December. When it comes to doing results sets, this is the searching side of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some extra methods. So I'm going to add this ultimate books. So of course, the ultimate books have a title that is like 42. But you'll notice that I'm just returning the search. I'm not adding an all or a single or an anything else to the end of it. So that search result set is returned. I'm also going to add this other method below by author. So I can pass an author object into that, and then I'm going to specify that I want the author ID. 
So using that, I can call result set books. I can then get out the ultimate books, which gives me the result set. And then when I want to actually get results from that result set, I can call all, which gives me the list of them. Or I could iterate over it using the next method. The really interesting bit, however, comes when you start looking at chaining these together. So here, I've got books and authors. I'm going to search for the author, Douglas Adams. And then, using that author object, I'm actually going to call the book model and say, well, I want ultimate books that are by a specific author and pass in the author object. Now, you can then actually chain these things together. So the other way of doing this is you can even do them as individual stages. So I can say, well, I want the ultimate books here. And then I want to call the by author method. I don't have to chain them all. I can do those in stages, as is relevant. And you then see when you debug the SQL that it tells you exactly what has been selected and the SQL that has been created for you under the hood. You can actually get very fancy with this. And there's no real limit. So we can have books by, that are children's books by a specific author, published after a certain date, where the first page has something else on it, and it's got a user rating greater than four, and then go and fetch all of those results. So what you see is that you end up with very clean code. You don't have to have reams of SQL slightly confusing you about what's going on. You can make this as clean as you want to. Now, we can also overload various things. So maybe you want to manipulate the data or put in some tracking or whatever it happens to be when you create a new object. So here, when we're on the result set authors, we can create our own new method and allows us to do that manipulation. Once we've manipulated it however we need to, that's the point we can then call the next method and pass that on through to DVX class, which will actually create the record in the database. So we've looked at fairly simple relationships so far. What happens when they start getting a bit more complicated? Of course, books don't always have one author. Sometimes they have multiple authors. So we need to create something that implements this. So we're going to add a join table. So authors can link to the join, and books can link to the join. So we can build all of that. Now, that actually looks quite messy. And you know, there are a few relationships going on here. So we've got to create our join table. So we're going to call it author and books. We're going to specify our foreign keys. So we've got our author field and our book field, which again have int of eight. So that relates to the primary keys on the other two tables. So we've got books relates to the authors and books. Um, so we have that has many relationship. So here we've got the name of the accessor, author and books, the related class. So where's it linking to? And what is the relationship? Of course, we then need the other side of this, the belongs to. So our result set, authors and books, has to link through to that. And on top of that, we then need to say the same for the authors. Now, all of that is automatically created for you when you use the schema loader. So you create the little script, and that's it. No extra coding. All of that gets created. The only bit that you do need to do is add the many-to-many -many relationship. So this is the one bit you will then need to go into your result sets books. You say you're going to, on this package, define the many-to-many -many relationship, specifying the accessor name, and also the has-many relationship, and what that relationship is on that other table, so that it can follow it through. We need to do the same for the authors. And then when we want to actually come to using this, so here we can create an author, get our author model, create our author, and then add to books, as we did before. So that's just adding a new book. And we can see that it's not just inserted the book, but it's also inserted the relationship into the author and books table. So you can just keep using that. So an author, we can add a book. You pass in the book object. Or a book, you can add an author, author one, and then another author, and so on and so forth. So in 16 lines of code, you've actually defined all of this relation stuff set up within your database. For errors, I would say read them closely. Um, things like whether it's plural or single, 
Uh, and with errors, make sure that you turn on the debugging, you read those error messages, and you check all the field names. It does tell you why things have gone wrong, especially looking at the package names as well. I would also say check which database you're connecting to. I, I've often, honestly, I've never accidentally tested against live instead of dev. You know, you'd be silly to do that. Um, and then very briefly, I'm almost out of time, but when you're using template toolkit, if you use this, you need to always use the result set because of the way template toolkit looks at uh, va variables. It always deals with them in list context. With Catalyst, you can actually integrate that directly as a model. So here we're using uh, the Catalyst model DBIC schema. So you just tell it the name of your schema, and then when you're within your Catalyst controller or Catalyst model, you can just do, call model on that and access it directly. So hopefully you can see that it's a very powerful tool. Thank you. Very quickly, are there any questions? Cool, thank you very much.